going on guys want to make a quick video and show you my homemade anodizer that I just built and uh, just kind of give you a brief overview of uh, my build the inside of the box there and uh, maybe give you some ideas if some of you are looking to build your own anodizer uh, this is the way I did it now most of the information that I got for this build uh, I got from mrtitanium.com uh, I am in no way affiliated with this website uh, this is just uh, one that I found and uh, seemed to have some pretty good information. Uh, I looked at a couple other websites and uh, different pages and references. And uh, they all had uh, some good info, but it uh, seems like uh, for the most part uh, this website had everything I needed in one place. Uh, now they actually have a couple of models on the site that you can build. Uh, one uses a dimmer switch and some cheaper items. And uh, I'm sure that one works uh, just as well as this one does. But uh, I went with the more uh, pricey version, which uses the variable transformer or the Variac. And uh, had a couple other things into it uh, that really weren't on the website. But uh, nevertheless, uh, it's a good resource and uh, should definitely be more than enough to get you started. Now, just to kind of give a real quick overview of the outside, <clears throat> uh, it's really a pretty basic uh, machine here. Uh, basically, what you're doing is building uh, just a variable DC power supply. Uh, now, you can buy one uh, already made. You can even buy something specifically made for anodizing. Uh, but generally, they're uh, a little bit more expensive uh, than the money that I have into this. And uh, with the... DC power supplies or the lab supplies, uh, either they're really expensive or the cheaper versions have a more limited range. Uh, the other reason I built this was really because I like uh, building uh, electrical projects and things like that. So uh, it kind of gave me something to do and uh, something to be proud of. So uh, take it for what it's worth. Uh, if you got the money, you can buy one already made. Uh, you can buy just a power supply or you can build your own. So uh, again, just going over the real quick basics here. Uh, this is a DC voltage meter. Uh, I got this on Amazon for about $15. Uh, it only reads the DC voltage, uh, which is really all you need. Uh, you got a power switch, uh, power neon. Uh, and this actually is a pretty good power indicator too, but uh, this is just in case this ever craps out on me. Uh, I know that I got voltage going through the switch here. Uh, here are some banana plugs, uh, which I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, again, this is the Variac. Uh, most newer ones have a different setup on the front here. Uh, usually some screw posts or some banana plugs or terminals. Uh, this is an older one, uh, back when these were made to plug things into, and uh, it's got just a regular Edison plug on the front there with the power switch. So I uh, just used a plug rather than modifying it. Uh, on the back we got a GFCI, ground fault circuit interrupter, uh, for some additional safety. Uh, your power cord. And uh, then this is the incoming uh, variable AC voltage that will go to my bridge rectifier. And then on the top here is just a momentary on switch for bleeding the capacitor. So real quickly we'll open it up. And uh, this probably looks a lot more complicated than it is. Uh, just with all the wires and the bird's nest in here. Uh, probably could have made it a little bit neater but being that it's covered up, uh, I was kind of in a hurry. So uh, what we got here, again, this is just a front panel. Uh, here's a capacitor, and that's really just to clean up the signal, uh, the DC voltage a little bit. And uh, what I can also do, uh, since I have the capacitor in here, this will actually be able to uh, double as a carbonizer, uh, hopefully as well. So I'll need a few other things, uh, such as an engraver, and uh, kind of hooking that up uh, really to the same plugs here 
but uh, I do intend to use this uh, kind of as a dual purpose box, uh, both anodizing and carbonizing. So uh, I got a thousand millifarad uh, capacitor rated up to 400 volts. Uh, you can see it's pretty big. You could probably get away with a smaller one, uh, even in the microfarads. But uh, this is what the website recommended, so that's what I went with. Uh, right here, I just got a regular DC power supply. This came from a Sony Discman uh, that I no longer have. It supplies four and a half volts to this voltage meter, uh, which needs an external supply. And then uh, uh, that's plug, outlet, uh, bridge rectifier, which has a variable AC uh, going then out to the capacitor and the banana plugs. And then up here we have a power resistor to bleed the capacitor along with our momentary on switch. So uh, that's really it. Uh, Again, it looks maybe a little bit more complicated than it is, but it's really a fairly basic uh, idea. Uh, you could probably get away without using the meter if you got just a regular multimeter. And uh, probably don't necessarily need this power switch because I've got this one. But uh, I didn't want something to uh, shut the voltage off uh, altogether. So uh, that's why I put that on there. And then the cat bleed, uh, you really do need. Uh, this, you probably don't need. Uh, again, that's kind of a safety feature. Uh, so really this could be simplified a little bit more. Uh, but most of it was uh, convenience and uh, safety. So uh, now back to these banana plugs. Uh, something some of you might notice right away uh, that I really didn't until afterwards uh, was the copious amount of exposed metal here. And uh, I'm not sure why these are designed this way. Uh, this is actually a really stupid design uh, if you've got any voltage at all running through this because if you touch these, uh, you're going to get zapped. And uh, I could potentially have up to 200 volts DC or more running through this. And uh, I guess that's what I get for buying cheap Chinese parts. Uh, they're really poorly designed. And then uh, to make matters worse, uh, here's a mail plug. Uh, again, with almost as much metal hanging off of it. So uh, just imagine for a moment if I'm... Uh, Turning this on and going to unplug this, I reach there, grab there, uh, I'm going to get knocked on my butt. So these are getting changed out uh, immediately. Probably going to go to Radio Shack tomorrow. You get something like this, which has no exposed metal. And uh, works a lot better. Uh, the money I saved on these, there may be... 25 50 cents a piece definitely not worth it so please keep that in mind when you build your own uh, now real quickly just to turn this on go ahead and bleed uh, any residual voltage off this is at zero. Oh man I just hit that stupid banana plug uh, that's exactly why I'm changing those but uh, anyway, we'll leave that in the video. Uh, felt like a lot more than 1.3 volts, let me tell you. But uh, supposedly that's what we're getting here. Uh, I guess we can go ahead and verify that real quick. With our voltage meter. Let's see if I can zap myself again. to do one-handed uh, you can see one and a half volts here we're reading 1.4 so we're within a tenth of a volt I'd say that's close enough but uh, let's go ahead and turn the dial up 
and uh, I really can't go off these numbers. You can see that should be about 30 volts there. I'm actually reading about 45 volts. Yeah, I cranked this up all the way to really past 200, uh, which is the limit of this uh, meter. Let's go ahead and bleed it back down a little. So there's 185, uh, which here should be about 124. So uh, you could see the DC voltage uh, is a little more than uh, what that variac is telling me. So take that for what it's worth. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, turn it back down to zero. We can actually shut the variac off. And uh, you can see that capacitor is still holding quite a bit of voltage. So if I were to touch that again, uh, I'd get a nice little wake up. But uh, if we hold our bleed switch down, you can see it takes a little while. I could probably get a better resistor to do this. But uh, really it's just a few seconds, so... Let's see, it should stop around one volt or so, give or take. Or actually, now that I have the variac off, it should go uh, just about all the way down. So, uh, there's that. And uh, that's really the basic build, guys. Uh, this video went on a little bit longer than I uh, wanted it to, but uh, hopefully it gives you some ideas if you guys are thinking about building or modifying your own. Uh, I have not used this to anodize yet. I still have to set up a tank for my solution and then uh, get a cathode ready, do some other things. And again, I want to change these banana plugs out of something that won't kill me. But uh, for the most part, this thing's ready to go. Uh, eventually, I will get an engraver uh, with a carbide tip and uh, modify that for use with a carbonizer. And I uh, really shouldn't have to do anything to this box uh, other than swap the banana plugs out uh, to my engraver. And uh, it should uh, translate pretty well into that. Uh, now... I haven't done my first anodizing yet, so I will probably make a video afterwards, show you the results, uh, make sure that it works. But, uh, this was probably the hard part, so let's uh, go ahead and call this a video, and uh, I think I'm going to call it a night. Uh, any comments, feedback, uh, questions, go ahead and leave them below. Uh, I do appreciate the views, and uh, stay tuned.